This time on The Gadget Show. As the Christmas party season approaches, we do the decent thing. We get down and party. Dallas and I use gadgets to try and start our very own street parties. Surprise! John goes out on the town with Lady Victoria Hervey to test the very best party cameras you can buy. And we go in search of the ultimate gadget to make your party the most memorable event of the year. And I'd show you the top five computer games to look out for this Christmas. Oh, yes, what a great move. Hello, and welcome to The Gadget Show. Do you know what? I'm really excited. Are you? I'm really excited because December is quickly approaching. It's that oh. time of year it gives me a little tingle in my tummy. Hmm. You know, I feel like going out and buying a new frock. Oh. <laughs> popping down the chemist, getting myself some really cheap aftershave, you know, called something like Man or something like that. <laughs> Just splashing it all over, learning some killer dance moves and getting ready for the Christmas party season. Oh, well, that's good, because this week's challenge is all about partying and party gadgets. You better believe it, although I am actually a little bit of a party pooper, it has to be said, because I'm not involved in this week's challenge. It's all about Susie and Dallas. Our challenge was to find the best tech we could to make your Christmas parties go with a swing. As party environments go, what could be more testing than a city street? Our job was to attract as many revellers as possible to our Al Fresco events. Every street party needs music. Traditionally, you'd fling open your windows or blast some music from the back of a float. But since I had no float or windows, I had to find some tech for my tunes. And I'm going to play them on this rather fabulous piece of kit. I guess you could call it a boombox for the digital era. The Street Machine is the ultimate boombox for playing your digital music. It has an SD slot, USB connection and an integrated iPod dock. It's light enough to carry and its rechargeable battery and robust finish make it ideal for a block party. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually known around the Gadget Show production office as being a bit of a karaoke king. And I'm too sexy for myself. Too sexy. Despite my legendary love of karaoke, getting the full setup of lights, mics, stages, amps, screens, DVD players and great big speakers into a busy street wasn't really practical. Which is why I have this. An all-in-one karaoke system. The Skytronic portable karaoke system runs on its own rechargeable batteries, so it's great for a street party. It can play your CDs, DVDs and MP3s, and it has not one but two wireless mics so you can duet with your mates. It's even got a handle to pull it through the town. Brilliant. We had just half an hour to set up before our street parties had to start, which for me was easy. I just had to plug in my iPod, grab a coffee and sit down. He's got a dysfunctional palm tree. For me, it was a bit more complex. I'd had a sudden panic attack and wheeled in an extra bit of tech. My new friends, my party guests, may not have the same encyclopedic knowledge of Johnny Cash lyrics that I have. I'm going to need a TV. But with our parties being outside, a normal telly wouldn't do. I mean, what if it rained? So I found myself a genius bit of design, a 42-inch water-resistant TV. Sanyo's 42-inch monitor has an IP rating of 56, meaning it's protected against dust, rain and jets of water. But I wanted to test that out. I don't know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, waterproof, schmorterproof. Have a look at this. Now, I knew it claimed it could handle the elements, but throwing a bucket load of water over an actual TV still felt really, really wrong. Are you sure this is totally waterproof? Are you sure? I plugged it into my Skytronics. Will it survive? Oh, look at that. Look at that. We're running. Hooray! To make our parties go with a swing, we had both been allowed to recruit the help of some dance-based entertainers. I'd gone for a crew of break dancers. Oh, yeah! And I'd got... Ta-da! A pair of sexy hula girls. I need you guys to hula like you've never hula'd before. Right. Okay? OK? Go and get okay. some people! Our parties would be taking place in two squares right next to each other, so it would be very easy to see who was drawing the biggest crowds. Could Dallas's mobile karaoke win out over my street beats? Are you ready to party? We are ready! <laughs> Woo! I turned the bass right up on my street machine in the hope of drawing a massive crowd. Young men, 
There's no need to feel down, I say, young man. My wireless mic meant I could get involved with anyone who was hanging back. Do you want to come and do YMCA? Come on. Despite my fantastic breakdancers, my party was getting a muted response. And I wondered if my street machine wasn't quite loud enough with its 30 watt output compared to Dallas's 70. This is quite tricky, actually. There's not that many people. The crowd's not really getting very big. I just wish I could get it a bit louder. It's on max, though. Uptown girl. My 42-inch screen was big enough for plenty of my newfound friends to get involved, but I'd noticed that something was amiss. I really like the screen, it's clear and everything, but if you look at the top here, you can see a bit of condensation from the water has actually got in. But condensation looked like the least of his problems. On the other side of the square, my super cool street machine was now really pulling in the crowds. It kind of feels like now I've got all these people who want to turn it up even more and we can't, but for a bit of street dancing, it's perfect. And there was another ace at my street machine sleeve. See, the great thing about mine is that it's portable and we can go anywhere. Dallas had sacrificed his party's portability for extra tech and he just couldn't pull in the punters. He had no chance of winning now, so I decided to be charitable and lend him my friends. Summer fling don't mean a thing, but <sighs> the Shocking. Carry on. That's shame. Great. Shame of it. You I'm shouldn't be ashamed. I'm sorry. Don't I'm be really sorry. Sorry. Sorry oh. is all that you can say. White court team up blocking the fire exit. <laughs> Move, please. Let's get this body started. <laughs> oh, t -t 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 -ow, t -ow, t -ow. Brilliant technology, guys. You know, that's why that's so good because it evokes performances like that. Do you think I should maybe turn the microphone off? I yes, would if, I if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. I think we've proved one thing, it's loud. It's very loud. <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> what I love about it is they've got all the, the formats you could ever wish for here. You can even play MP3 CDs on it, you know. It's absolutely brilliant. Although I think in Birmingham people were a little bit scared of doing karaoke and it was the street machine that won yeah. the day. And it got a lovely sound, actually. It's got a great sound. Really great sound. I wanted to turn it up louder, but look at the size of the square that I was in. If this was in your back garden, yeah. it would be amazing. Yeah. Fantastic piece Well done, of you won that challenge. Way. You won that challenge, Susie. Me and Susie. my rather attractive break And it was nothing to do with Easy. the break dancers, was it? Easy. Now, I want to talk to you about party cameras. These days, a party isn't a party, unless you can come straight back home afterwards and post loads of embarrassing pictures of your mates onto Facebook. The question is, though, with a whole host of Christmas parties happening any time soon, what sort of camera do you need to get good party photos? Do you still need a proper camera? Will your phone do? Or are there other options? To find out, I got myself invited to a really posh do in the company of socialite Lady Victoria Hervey. As a former catwalk model and darling of the tabloids, Victoria knows a thing or two about photography. They're probably more from the other side of the lens to me. Been doing a bit of sponsorship here. <laughs> She'd got us onto the guest list of the exclusive on-off party during London Fashion Week, and I wondered how I'd fit in. We're going to have to, like, dress you up. Yes, something. yes, maybe we can do that. Put a bit of, like, I don't know, give you, like, a fake tattoo or something. Fake tattoo? I can't wait. To two or not, I was keen to see which of my three party cameras she'd prefer. I think we should start off with a sort of camera, camera. That, okay. uh, but it, it's not entirely unspecial because it's actually Casio's slimmest camera okay. yet. I'm liking this one, I think it's a good size. At under 15 millimeters, the Casio Exilim S10 claims to be the world's slimmest 10 megapixel camera. It also has a large 69 millimeter screen that fills the rear of the camera. It fires up quickly and the flash means it's well suited to capturing the action in the low light conditions you usually find at parties. I want to get like the crowd. Yes. Can I take a picture of you guys? It's only got a three times optical zoom and has no wide angle lens, but most of our party pictures came out well, even though the low lighting meant several were a bit soft. The flash is a little blurry. And it doesn't just do stills. Like all the cameras we were testing, it can also shoot video, even though, like the others, it doesn't have image stabilisation. You can choose from a range of different video resolutions, including one specifically designed for uploading to YouTube. Everything we shot showed plenty of detail with reasonable sound, so the Casio had proved to be accomplished at both stills and video. 
Next, we tried the Kodak ZI6, a pocket-sized camcorder that shoots high-definition video but also includes a 5-megapixel stills camera. It records onto SD cards, which okay. go to the side, and uh, it's got a focus switch there, and uh, it's got this thing here. If you press that, uh, uh, a that USB oh socket God. comes up, so, so you, you plug it into your computer. In? Shall we try it? OK, let's try it. Let's go and explore. Yes. The ZI6 hopes to emulate the success of easy-to-use flash camcorders like the Flip and takes the concept a stage further by shooting in 720p resolution. I'm kind of liking the video camera mode. You're liking the video? Don't yeah. do a video of the food going on. Sort of videoing Unfortunately, when we tried shooting video in low-lit parts of the party, the Kodak really struggled. As a stills camera, you really miss not having a flash. Victoria decided to compare the Kodak with the Casio by photographing me with Clio rockers. And the resulting photos showed just how poorly the Kodak performed in low light. The final camera I'd bought to test was a mobile phone, the Sony Ericsson C902. Mobile phones are great at parties, as you'll usually have them with you, and their cameras have got better and better. The, um, so this is half the quality of the other Half the quality of the Casio, in terms of at least it's megapixels, but megapixels aren't everything, as we never tire of saying. You actually get at the camera, you slide that open like that, it reveals the lens, and an LED, unfortunately not a Xenon, just an LED flash Should on the back. Should we try and uh, yeah. see what happens? And then you can press that to uh, to shoot. It's got lots of things. You can actually edit photos in here if you want to. It's got a video mode. You know what to know about all that? No, no, no. It's very interesting video at the moment. If you want to go to stills, it's like that. And it's got a video camera as well. Wow. It's got a video camera as well. This has face detection, which seemed to work well on the screen, with squares appearing round faces. In spite of this, however, the resulting stills look like you were shooting through a fog, and the flash is weedy. Eventually, it took it. It's quite a delay, isn't it? Shutter delay was pretty tardy as the autofocus struggled to focus the picture and delayed firing the shutter. So I missed capturing shots like this. I think you, just, I think you missed the pictures with this. It's too slow. Yeah. It was quick to switch to video mode, however. Great, since the place was full of celebrities, as well as Tara Palmer Tompkinson and Duncan James from Blue. Unfortunately, the Sony's videos weren't as good as either the Casio's or the Kodak's, being less detailed and with a tendency to blur on movement. I think this one's a little bit too tricky. It's too, the the too small. It's just, yeah, it doesn't quite it's do what you want it to. No, There's a touch button. It starts just... doing things that it shouldn't do. The Kodak, I the Kodak. Like what this we... one, you like You like that? You quite like, like the idea of having this big video camera to take around. Yeah, this I kind nice of like funky. that, yeah. This was my favourite at the beginning. In the beginning, what do you think of the Casio? I think overall? I still overall would probably be the one I would choose. Well, John, I think you did yourself proud in high society. <laughs> I think I did a passable job of fitting in, and Abs I enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about these yeah. uh, these party cameras. Yeah. Uh, let's give them some G, starting off with the Sony Ericsson. So, well, under those conditions, and I stress under those conditions, it really only deserves two Gs, because it's just so slow to respond, and all the pictures it looks as though you were sort of peering through this film rather than being a nice, well-defined image. It's a shame, because it's a, it's a beautiful mm. design, isn't it? Mm. Um, OK, uh, the Kodak, with its high-def possibilities, <laughs> how many Gs for that? Well, I think it's still only two Gs. I think it was a bit better than the Sony, but it doesn't deserve a lot more because you really do need the flash. And also, in those dark conditions, the video was just too juddery. It wasn't smooth. What about the Casio X Slim? Well, I'd give that four Gs because, I mean, it's not a bad camera on any terms, but it's particularly good when it's so small, handy and easy to carry. And I think, um, mm. you know, Lady Victoria took a bit of a shine to it. It's a good-looking camera. You get the idea that she wanted to keep it in a little pouch there. Yeah, yeah, I think she might be going to a few parties with one in the near future. OK, so mm. the Casio X Slim S10 is the gadget show's party camera of choice. And talking of cameras, I've got another one over here which you could be interested in. It's Panasonic's new Lumix G1. Basically, it's the world's first camera with interchangeable lenses and an electronic viewfinder. It's supposed to have all the flexibility of an SLR, so you get the different lenses and, and the image quality as well. But at the same time, it's as easy to use as a compact camera. Fantastic. Right, I've got a great piece of technology designed to stop those annoying calls coming into your landline. Oh, okay. brilliant. Good. Before I demonstrate it, yeah. I need someone annoying to ring me. I'm sorry. I knew it was You're coming. not annoying, clearly not. I knew Could you it was play coming. that role? 
I can't, I'll play, you can that, play role that role for the purposes of this Give us a ring, OK? It's called the True Call. It's a box that sits in between your landline and your, and your wall socket. As the call comes in, I have various options. One is just to pick the phone up and chat to the person. The other one is to uh, star them, so I not only chat with them, but I always they can always get through. Hello. Just so like, like a VIP like guest list. Like a VIP thing. guest list, yeah. exactly. Please see um, your name. The other one is to politely... Are you going to have to leave your name Dallas now? Campbell. OK, he's going to, the machine is asking for his identity. Oh, it's ringing me now. The other one is, is to uh, politely say that I'm not here so that they think that I'm not in, so they, they leave a message or whatever. Machine. The best one, though, is to zap him. You're about to zap this caller. To confirm, press the hash key. We're not interested in your call. Please hang up now and don't call us again. <laughs> Fantastic! Hey! That's what it means! Oh, no! It's awesome! It's great tech! But some more great tech uh, is in this <laughs> week's top five. As I said earlier on the programme, uh, Christmas is fast approaching, and so Hooray. little boys and big boys and very switched on girls the world over are hoping for some video games in their stockings. Sometimes all you want is a simple game that's quick to load and fun to play, and Lego Batman on the Nintendo DS fits that bill. The latest in the successful LEGO series, this 30-level action game is available on all platforms. You fight your way around collecting LEGO bricks and the characters. Buildings and objects are also made out of LEGO. Like the LEGO Star Wars and Indiana Jones that have gone before, Batman is a great fun, easy to play, distracting little game, and I'm a big fan. Number four is Spore from the makers of The Sims, and it could possibly be the biggest game in the history of games. You start as a single-celled organism floating around in a really big sea, and you kind of eat everything that you come into contact with. And as you eat, you, uh, you eat particular cells, and they enable you to evolve. You control your character's evolution through four stages, ending up in the conquest of space. The space element of Spore is almost a game in itself. You've got 50,000 planets to explore in the Spore universe. Spore offers a great one-player experience, but most of its elements can be customised, stored in a central database and used by other Spore players. Next up, we've got Sean White snowboarding on the Wii. It's available on other platforms, but it rocks on the Wii, as you can use the balance board from Wii Fit to control it. There are basically two games I think the Wii has been missing for a long time. One is a good, decent lightsaber game, and the other one is a physical snowboarding game like this. You lean forward to go faster, back to slow down, and you turn as you would on an actual board. You only use a couple of buttons on the controller to do tricks, otherwise it's all in your feet, and it's fantastic. Which is crazy! Oh, yeah! Yay! Not only will this do well for Nintendo, but it'll also do well for travel agents, because it really does give you that snowboarding bug. I've always fancied myself as an armchair general. Dominating the world from my living room really appeals to me. Now I've found the perfect game to do it. Tom Clancy's End War is an action strategy game for the Xbox 360 and PS3, where you control a World War III army. But it's how you control that army that is really impressive. Using a headset, I can control my troops and send them to any place in the gaming map without lifting a finger. You select a unit, tell them what you want them to do and where you want them to do it, and off they go. It's amazingly responsive. Unit 7, attack, hostile 5. Unit 1, move to Lima. The voice interface is awesome and the action is intense, but it's not top of our list. And number one is a platform puzzle game called Little Big Planet, and it's just kind of odd, but in a really good way. You start by customising the look of your fabric-covered character. Then you head out to complete a whole bunch of really crazy tasks in one of 50 weird and wonderful pre-designed levels. But it doesn't stop there. You can also create your own levels and then share them with other players online. Little Big Planet is receiving rave reviews for its creativity, its gameplay, and its original and innovative graphics. Just look at the thing, it's absolutely beautiful. It reminds me of a, of a lovely children's book. I mean, youngsters will play this just on one level because it's delightful to look at. But people like me will play it as well because it's ironic and it's clever. It's such good fun. If you don't already own a PS3, go and buy one so you can play this game. It really is that good. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, you know, I think this is the most gorgeous computer game I've ever played, which is not something you would normally say about a game, is it? I've certainly never heard you describe a computer game as gorgeous, and I'm really pleased. It says a lot about what this game is trying to do. Oh, this is a Christmas winner. And the game is out in the shops. Watch this. Woo! 
we'd come to the trendy 24 bar in London to test out some of the coolest bar gadgets around. This kit aims to help you concoct faultless drinks every time and astonish your guests. We'd be competing to impress renowned cocktail expert and professional mixologist Wayne Collins. Wayne, how do you do? Nice to meet you. Thanks That's for nice coming. How are you doing? Hello there. Busy. Nice what to meet can you. we get you? Okay, for your first test, I'd like you to make me two very classic cocktails, please. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> City Broad Drill. Correct. I absolutely love this drill blender, which mixes your cocktail using, of course, a cordless drill. The higher the rev count on your drill, the smoother the drink. So I'd gone for a Black & Decker 1200 RPM model. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's actually a brilliant idea. The ice-crushing blades in my drill blender's lid were perfect for making a margarita. And that goes on the top tight, as you like. Got this special little cocktail bit. Nice. And I am ready to make a cocktail. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. What? I think this is brilliant, but I have to say, it's not very sophisticated, Susie, is it? I mean, if I was James Bond and I saw you mixing my cocktail with a drill, I would shove it back in your face and then tastefully remove your kneecap. I fancied the rather more suave, wearing professional martini maker. It supposedly shakes or stirs the perfect drink, aiming to get your martini to the optimum temperature of precisely one degree above zero. So I want it stirred. Okay. I press that. OK, we're off. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Look at that! So this is spinning away nicely. You can actually see on the outside oh, yeah. of, the, of the shape. It's actually frosting up nicely. Yeah. Both machines appeared to do the job, but the true test of our cocktails would be Wayne's very experienced taste buds. First up, my martini. Not cold enough. <gasps> Interesting. Oh. Next up, my margarita. With Dallas's cocktail in trouble, I just hope my DIY drink could impress. I think on pure kind of fun theatre and innovation, it's got to be the drill. Oh, oh, the girl. drill makes a rock! Oh. Come on! So I'd won the first round, but our second test was to see who could pull the perfect pint. Now, see, the tricky thing about serving draft beer is you've got to have the first of all, the temperature's got to be right, you've got to have the gas pressure correct, and when you hold a glass, you've got to tilt it right, and when you actually pour it, you get the correct serving head. That's crucial. No. Problem for me because I have got this, the Wonder Bar. I reckon the Wonder Bar is a beer geek's dream. A home cooler and pump system. Mains powered, it claims to cool drinks from 25 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees within just a couple of hours. Now, if you love the idea of draft beer from the pub but you can't be able to leave the comfort of your own home, then this is definitely for you. You put the keg inside here, put the top down, and pull yourself a nice glass of beer. The only drawback I could see is that its nine-pint capacity wouldn't go very far at a party. I'll be honest, Susie, I think this is a really nice-looking gadget. Thank I can you. see it in pride of place in my house. It's just such a shame that the only thing I've got to compete with it is this! This is a custom-made robot bartender programmed to pull drinks with pinpoint precision. So the whole thing is controlled by this control panel here. You can see we've got it set for half pints, but it'll also do bottles. So why don't we set it for three? There we go, because there's three of us. Processing order, press that, and away we go. His arms are powered by hydraulics. In fact, they're the same as those used on car assembly lines. Dallas's robot might look cool, but would it actually pull a good pint? It was testing time, and Wayne started with my offering from the Wonder Bar. It's got a very good head. Thank you. Uh -huh. Fair point. Um, could be colder, to be honest. Gutted! The Wonder Bar's chilling skills had let Susie down. Now it was my turn. That is really refreshing. Oh, it? come on! He's cold man. Nice job. So we'd now won one test each. On to our final test, the best gadget bar. First up was my stylish table with a twist. Oh! Oh, come on! Oh. That is sexy. Hey, that and is that gorgeous. is a fridge. The bespoke Garenya Smart Table is perhaps, unsurprisingly, the only fridge table hybrid in the world. It's fantastic. Imagine having your friends round for a nice drinks party and 
all your pre-prepared cocktails and chilled dry martinis just come oh, out of the, the table wow like factor. that. I also have something that I think you guys are going to like. This is, in fact, the Mindstorm eye bar, and if you put your glass on it, you will mm -hmm. see how brilliant it is. Oh, oh, cool. Because it will illuminate your glass, and if you touch it, you can make oh, these fantastic patterns. The eye bar works using internal video projectors which shine images onto the surface and tracking sensors let you move the virtual objects around. As well as fun patterns, you can also play with pictures, pub quizzes, it even lets you play classic games like Pong. Yeah, I think it's great to have a bit of travel pursuit or, you know, over the bar while you're waiting for your drinks to arrive or to get served. Correct! Yay! But would Wayne rate the eye bar over my smart table? Oh, if I had to choose one, I have to go for the luxury of that table because of the whole cocktail Ooh, thing. Hey, 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 my hey, mind hey, store my Thank bar. you very much. Welcome. Hey, you know what that means? What does it mean? The round is on you. <sighs> Get him in. You see, you should have faith in power for making cocktails. It's a good idea, that's what that is. Yeah, I, I love it. it, I love it because yeah. it does make use of something that basically we've all got, you know, a drill. And, uh, and it's really inexpensive. Hey, but that does make it 2 0 yes, to Perry in the party challenge. Does. So you can't win this week's party oh. challenge, Dallas, but you can save face in part three, which is coming up later. But now it's time for the focus group. Each time on the focus group, John, Jason, and I present the best new gadgets that we can find in a particular category to our focus group and they tell us which one they like the best. Now, this week, uh, we're surrounded by people in Lycra, cyclists, bike riders, because we're testing biking gadgets. And, John, you're up first. Yes, well, I've got a, a sat-nav designed for cycling. It's the Garmin Edge 705. It does everything you'd expect a sat-nav to do, but quite a lot else besides. It fits on top of the handlebars. Uh, it's got a 15-hour battery life, and it comes with certain maps preloaded. You can add more via SD card, and it basically looks like the sort of display you get on a car. Sat -nav. You can program in routes and it'll give you a turn-by-turn -turn direction, as we see there. It's also got wireless built in, which it uh, uses to communicate with a sensor mounted on the rear wheel, so you get uh, much more accurate measurement of distance, sort of how far you've gone, how fast you're travelling. And it comes with a whole load of computer software, so you can analyse things like your cadence, whether you're pedalling too fast or too slow. So, Steve, what do you think of it? Um, it's really good. It's packed loads of features. You can take it on-road, off-road. It's weatherproof as well. OK, now Charlotte and I are going to demonstrate a gadget that may not fill you with desire, it may not fill you with wanderlust, but it is a fantastic safety gadget for your bike. It's called the bicycle. Essentially, they are indicators for your bike. You've got a strip of LED lights that are powered by batteries, so you fit them on the front and the back of your bike. It just indicates the right and they connect wirelessly. And then when you come round, just indicate left now. There you go. OK, here she comes. So it's not to replace the old arm out on the cycling proficiency test, but it's an extra safety feature for you while you're on your bike. You've got your iPod headphones on, OK? They get caught on a, on a twig. You go right yourself. Unless, of course, you've got the sci-fi, OK? This is the world's first bike-mountable speaker system, and DJ's here to bust some moves and show you how it works. Go and just be creative on that beautiful machine. It communicates wirelessly, the speaker, on the handlebars, uh, with this device, an iPod, or... Could someone else give it a try? <laughs> your phone, your iPhone, whatever it be. That's more like it! You get the general idea. It communicates wirelessly with the device on the handlebars. Bring it back in, DJ. Nice break in. Thank you. Um, was the seat a bit high for you there? Yeah, it was a bit. Okay. I'll just demonstrate how loud it is because it is actually very loud. I'll just turn that down. So I think it's a really exciting concept. It's not particularly expensive and it's a great way if, if there's a bunch of you going out, you know, into the middle of nowhere to share your music and have some fun. As well as showing off our kit to the focus group, we left them alone to have a bit of a play by themselves, try our gadgets for size and make up their minds as to which they like the best. I think it's like extremely useful for plotting routes, which is um, very good for road cycling. I thought it was a really good piece of kit. It wasn't too complicated to use. It's much safer than having your headphones in. Keep you safe on the roads. Well, the time has come for you to cast your final vote. You can only choose one of our three bike gadgets today, so if you'd like to go with John's bicycle sat-nav, raise your hands up high. Oh, it's Ooh, looking oh, very healthy. Good. Well Look. done, John. OK, next up is Susie's buy signals. If you'd like to be safe and seen, raise your hand up now, please. Oh, well, thank we've got you. one. And finally, what about my sci-fi, the bicycle-mounted speaker system? Is that the sort of thing you'd like to go out with? Wow, I'm really impressed. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
very impressive show, but we do have a winner. It's John and his Garmin bike sat now. Yay, well done, John. It's time for Dallas to wow you with some tech. He's been on one of his gadget hunting trips to the USA and has found what I think is possibly the most amazing technological innovation we've seen this year. This may look like an ordinary radio-controlled helicopter, but guess what? It's actually one of the most sophisticated flying machines in the world. What you're looking at is the future. This helicopter is being taught how to pilot itself. Using artificial intelligence technology, these computers are learning how to control the chopper so they'll be able to fly it without any human input at all. It's called apprenticeship learning, and it allows this helicopter to be a fully autonomous flying machine and a step nearer to pilotless flight. It's doubly impressive, since flying a helicopter well is so incredibly difficult, as they are inherently unstable. But that didn't stop me having a go. Under the watchful eye of radio-controlled expert Garrett, I took to the skies. It's yours. Oh, look at my skills! Look at my skills, Garrett! Awesome, I think you got yeah. it! For about 30 seconds, before losing control and plummeting to the ground. Where is it? Oh, I definitely proved how hard it was. I'm really sorry, guys. Oh, hey, that's all right. So how on earth does the computer do it? What's the process? We're actually going to have a human go fly the helicopter first, and then we're going to have the computer watch what the human does, and then learn to go fly that same thing on its own. So, stage one. First of all, the team's radio-controlled master, Garrett, takes the chopper on a thrilling aerobatic session, pushing the craft to its limit. All the while, the computers are watching what he does. A whole host of sensors on the helicopter are recording its position and orientation, while two cameras on the ground are tracking it in the sky. The computer also reads Garrett's control movements. If you look on the middle screen, you see the joystick movements of our pilot being recorded. So all three of those Packages of information are, being, are going to be number crunched mm -hmm. by the exactly. computer. Right. Next, it's stage two. After the computers have watched Garrett fly, they have to figure out how they can fly like that. Unlike traditional unmanned drones, these computers use special learning algorithms to work out how to make the autonomous helicopter perform the same manoeuvres. How to put the controls in the right place with the right amount of power and facing in the right direction to achieve the right move at the right time. They work out a flight plan of how to best tackle the routine. It's not just learning what the movements of the control sticks are. It's learning when you move the sticks, how the helicopter will react. So that when, let's say it gets blown off to one side, it knows how to move the sticks to counter that motion. And that's the final stage. The moment the chopper goes into autonomous mode, all sorts of unpredicted variables like gusting wind can make it crash, despite its pre-planning. For this, a whole bunch of onboard sensors are ready to kick in to feed back data. Accelerometers to measure speed, gyroscopes to measure orientation, and even magnetometers that use the Earth's magnetic field to work out which way the chopper is pointed. It's actually just a fancy name for a compass. Then it was time to put it all into practice for the computer to fly the same routine as Garrett, a routine it had just taught itself from scratch. Three, two, please don't crash the computer. One, go. Autonomous. My heart was in my mouth as the helicopter switched to autonomous mode, but it worked. It was truly amazing to see. That's unbelievable. That isn't Garrett flying the helicopter. If you look at Garrett's hands here, can you see, if you take your fingers off, this is completely the computer doing this absolutely autonomously. This is fantastic. The constant calculations and corrections really worked, and the helicopter performed its way through the aerobatics perfectly. That's cool. In the future, they hope autonomous helicopters like this could search for landmines and war zones or track wildfires, basically to go where no human pilot could while flying as well as the best in the world. For now, though, it's a real glimpse of the future. Rather than a bunch of engineers having to write software from scratch to control every single movement, this apprenticeship learning is how robots will learn, well, everything. Oh, thanks for coming. Oh, 
You look fantastic. You look great. Oh, let me take your coat. Get a drink. I think you've lost weight. Seriously, I mean, I haven't seen you for ages. But it's so good to see you. Listen, I think you know everyone. Have you met my friend Jason? Jason Bradbury? Oh, dear. And that's how your average <laughs> Christmas party starts. Then the music comes on. It's turned up far too loud. There's dancing in the front room. Serious conversation in the kitchen. And eventually, the police arrive over the <laughs> garden fence. Yeah, remind me not to go to one of your parties. <laughs> but seriously, though, it's that time of year if you're about to organise the ultimate Christmas party, a real lavish affair, then you'll be wanting the ultimate party gadget. Yeah, one piece of killer tech is your central showpiece that'll leave all your party guests speechless. And that's what these two guys had to find in the final part of this week's challenge, the ultimate Christmas party gadget. Scores of tech-hungry gadgeteers were knocking at the door and we had to provide them with the best in party entertainment. However, pole dancers and stripping firemen were out, unfortunately. Our showstoppers all had to be tech-based. Right, so my ready party guests have arrived and everyone's in a party mood. But, you know, for a party you need music, you need lights, you need groovy effects, all of which take a long time to set up. But not in this house. Regarde, s'il vous plaît. Party mode. I'm using a home automation system that, with just one touch, can dim the house lights and start up all my party lights, music, and even gadgets like smoke machines and disco balls, which are plugged into the automated sockets. So this house is entirely automated using a system called OpenAV. OpenAV allows you to control every gadget and socket via one wireless touch panel, and you can keep adding gadgets to the system without limit. The really cool thing about the OpenAV software is that you can program it with your own unique set of rules like I've done with the party mode. Boss! <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty impressive Dallas Campbell. You love this. It's very you good. You love it. But I think I've got something that's just as good. Follow me, chaps. This is my graffiti wall. Don't worry that. Thank you, Michael. All I have to do is press the button, spray, and the digital spray comes out on the wall. The movement of this digital spray can is tracked by a computer using infrared, just like an infrared mouse. That tracking information is passed to a specially made program which turns the movement into digital paint, and a projector transfers your graffiti to the screen. Susie's graffiti was pulling in the punters with its digital retro appeal. But if we were going to take it back old school, I had the solution. A good old-fashioned dance-off. All right, I want everyone to stop dancing because you're all terrible. You're all awful. Oh, I'm going to show you real moves, guys, courtesy of the Mech RC. The Mech RC entertainment robot comes with 100 pre-installed movements which you control using a remote. And packing 17 servos capable of 180 degree movement, he's pretty blooming agile. Each robot can be set to the same radio channel so that it can be started from one handset, meaning in theory you could have an infinite army of robots all dancing in sync. Everyone together! Young man! <laughs> <laughs> I said, but the great thing is, if you're not content with his pre-programmed motions, you can create your own using his controller software. Add different poses to the animation film strip, download it to him via USB, and you can get him to pull any custom moves you like. Now that is dancing, ladies and gentlemen. To win back the party people from Dallas's dancing droid, I was going to have to go for something pretty spectacular. OK, everyone, if you want to see something really fabulous, follow me. This gadget party wasn't just about the stuff inside. I'd found something big enough for the whole neighbourhood. Something to get the entire house dancing, quite literally. OK, go! Oh! The amazing light show works by sequencing cell lamps to music. Using a bit of software called Sunlight, you can add lighting events to a music track, much in the same way that Dallas added his robot dance moves to his track. But with loads of lights rigged up to my controller, each capable of producing 16.2 million colours, I could build party effects on an epic scale. 
<laughs> so the lights are going off, the house is going off. How cool is that? <laughs> A normal night in my house. I, I, don't you. Doubt, I don't doubt that for a second. <laughs> Some great technology. I love the home automation. Uh, I think the idea of just one button yeah. that brings the whole house down into party mode is yeah, really it's pretty yeah. sexy, isn't it? Yeah, but, but it was not my favourite, and, and th this really is crunch time, OK, because I've got to decide which one of you has the ultimate party gadget. And Dallas, I think one of the most brilliant ideas for a party I've ever seen <laughs> Is dancing robots. They're great, aren't they? Yeah, I love I'm a big fan of robots. robots. As you know, I've got a dancing yeah. robot over myself. Those guys were brilliant. They moved together in yeah. harmony, and they certainly caused a, you know a bit of a wow. Yeah. However, no. however, I'm sorry. For me, the win has to go to the digital spray cans. Yay! Hey, it's Fair my party, and you can cry if you want. <laughs> No, that's absolutely terrible. Well, that is all we've got time for this week. Great show for you next time. See you then. Bye. Bye.